Hi everybody. So uh, my name is Tom Chapman. I've been running games for a few years now and every so often I've posted on the Game Master's Journey community a screenshot of a game that I'm about to run this weekend or something that I've been, I've been working on and a lot of you have asked what program I'm using to do this and the name of the program is Map Tools. It's uh, available for free from rptools.net. Uh, it's a lot like Roll20 from what it seems. Uh, I've never used Roll20 because I didn't want to pay for it and I enjoyed Map Tool and it's uh, free. So that's the main reason why I keep using it. I wanted to do some videos about this because uh, a lot of people have asked about Map Tool and even some of my players have asked about Map Tool and using it and I've tried to sit down with them and explain it. And the, the one thing about Map Tool is it's got a steep learning curve. Uh, quite a steep learning curve that is not user friendly at first, but then once you get it down, it's quite easy to customize. And so I just wanted to get to it and show you what I do. So I use this program for all of my tabletop role playing games. Uh, what you see on the screen in front of you is kind of what I use for Numenera. I've also used it a lot for Pathfinder, I've done it with Pathfinder Society, uh, and I've run two campaigns using this. And I've had a lot of positive feedback. I've even used this at conventions, uh, cons, and I've gone there and I've brought an extra monitor with me to play it that way. Uh, at gaming stores that have a widescreen TV, I often plug my HDMI into a widescreen TV and we run the game on a virtual tabletop like that. Now, uh, I wanted to show you in this video kind of some of the things that I use it for. So this screen that you see in front of you now, I put this together because I was getting tired of trying to find a good GM screen that had everything I wanted on it uh, and I could find easily. Now, if you notice along the edges, I'll go ahead and you can see this arrow. If you notice along the edges, you see a bunch of charts. And so these are all Numenera rules. I put these charts together myself. Uh, I screen captured them using uh, open office sheets and then uh, I just put them in. And so I can come in and see, all right, let me look at task difficulty, and I can have that quickly available, or all of the miscellaneous task difficulties over here. Some of the more rare rules, such as combat modifiers, and especially because sometimes you just want to have fun with the players, the lasting and permanent damage, uh, cipher dangers, things like that. Now, the first thing that I had done, though, are these 12 squares that you see in front of you right now. Now, each of these is an icon. And the cool thing about Map Tool is the way that these icons work, if I wanted to know something, such as special rules, sometimes in combat you roll an 18 and you can't remember what an 18 means in Numenera or the Cypher system, and so you click it, and right down here pops up this. And so I've kind of make a, made a GM screen with all the quick rules that I need to know, attempting a task, pool, edge, and effort. One thing that always comes up, recovering, and I've put healing down under here for that and all sorts of things like that. No, oh, here we go, tiers and benefits. And so that's what I made with my GM screen. So each of these things in the middle is a token, and around the edges, I just put charts. So if I click on the chart, nothing happens because I haven't set it up for anything. Uh, you'll also notice this, I've made the special rules, and then I thought, well, I need some ideas for major and minor effects based uh, on the Cypher system rules. So I have just this little bar that I drew over to a smaller token where I've got some ideas for that. Now, that's what I use for Numenera, and I have this screen up a lot in Numenera because it's a lot easier than going, all right, let's wait and look it up in a book, and I have this available. Now, I'm going to switch to another instance of Map Tool, and the cool thing about this, what I started using this version of Map Tool for, is this is from the Paizo Adventure Path, Curse the Crimson Throne. This is part one. And what I did is I opened it up on a PDF reader and I copied all of the text and I put all of the text into these tokens in some way. And so what I have here is the entire narrative for me to follow in a flowchart from the beginning when we first meet our PCs all the way to the end where I tell them they, to level up and we conclude the adventure. Now, I just wanted to show you kind of how I use each of these tokens. So you see these yellow ones over here. This is stuff that's just for me, such as the adventure background and the adventure summary. Now, the game officially starts at this token where I have part one, the haunted fortunes. 
And I kind of have all my notes I need on here. This is one of my earlier ones, so it's not as well put together, but it kind of it's one of the most narratively driven parts of this adventure path. And so I go from part one. Once that's done, I go to Zellera's home, which is the next step in part one. And you're going to notice that I have some things in italics and other parts are not in italics. The way that I set it up for myself is if I want to read it for the players or the players need to know it, I put it in italics and then I just read straight off of here or I go off of those. Now you'll see this yellow bar here and like this purple bar here. These are offshoots so this is a note from the game designers James Jacobs about what to do if the players are curious if it's a ghost and then over here this purple one meet the mob kind of a side quest sort of thing. And so what I use this for is a flow chart and I just go right down this and follow along. And I've got this set up for everything. And I've also got important benchmarks put in along the way. So if we follow up here, this red line is the main, I've set up for the main plot. But after part one, I've got this token with nothing coming off of it. I click on it. And using milestone leveling, this is where the party should then go to level two. And then we just follow all the way along. And I've got cool little things that I've put in here for all six parts of this adventure path. Now, I've also got some other things. So it's not just one map in each save file that you can have. So if I go up here to select map, this is everything that I've done for this part of the campaign. What the next thing that I want to show you is these uh, the pictures and handouts. Now, the way that this works is you can run your own GM instance of map tool and then either through the internet or on a second screen run another instance of map tool and that can be the player's screen and you can decide what to show them. So right now you're seeing what I see when I come to the pictures window. What I can do, this is what the players see. Absolutely nothing. So I can force them to come to this screen. I can right click on one of these photos and say visible to players. And then this is what they see and I can talk about this character Zellera. I also use this for handouts. So right now, as you can see up here, the player view shows nothing, but if I remove that, what I have ready to show them are these handouts. And when I'm ready, I can force them to this view, make that visible to players, make it big enough so that they can read it, and I can throw that up on a TV and they can read it for themselves. So I have that for both images and handouts. Uh, I wanted to show you another part, so I'm going to go to one of my, my maps. So I've got all this. I've got the world map so I can talk about where they are in relation to the world around them. I have the map of Varicia so they know can kind of see the nation that they're in. So all of this is Varicia in the world of Pathfinder. And then specifically a lot of things take place here in Corvosa. Right now we're on the player view. Let me show you what I see though when we go to this map. These are all the locations. So if someone says Oh, so we're going to Zellera's home? Where is that in Corvosa? They don't need to see it, but I can pull up this map and say it's right here. And what they'll see is just this arrow pointing there. I'll see the little token outlined in red so I know where things are. I've also done some things like this. There's kind of a uh, uh, tarot reading aspect to this version of the game. And so what I did is I kind of set this up ahead of time, and so we can turn over a card. I just delete this, and underneath is already the thing I have going for them. But that's specific for this one, just showing you some other things that you can do with this. Now, I wanted to show you this next part. This is the very first map that the party encounters. This is what I see. Now, if you see, it's kind of dark in this area, like this area in the middle is lighter than this area right here. What this is, is Fog of War. So if I show you as player, the player view is completely dark, but for me, I see everything that's going on. So I'm going to take this Jigsaw Shark, and I'm going to make it visible to players, and I am going to uh, open it and change it to a PC. And what this means is, what the players see is as they're exploring, let's say they come in this front door. All right, come in the front door, I force the view, and they see what's in that room. And I can make it so that the fog of war opens as you go into each area. 
Now it also works so that if the token leaves that view area, for example, A8 is now hidden from view and A7 shows all the NPCs. If I go back in, A7 is hidden, A8 shows everything. Also up here, oops, lost my token. Up here, you can see that there's this red box here. And I wanted to show you this real quick because Grab my wrong token. I wanted to show you this real quick because I can see the red box, which is a warning to me, be ready, there's something there, but the players don't see it. And so the players really get a kick out of this. They like exploring and going through and revealing one room at a time. So that's the Fog of War PC view and how I can use it to uncover things as the party moves along. Now if I go back to my GM view, what's really cool is if you look closely, let's go down here, let's pick uh, A6. So we're going to look at room A6. There's an NPC here, and also in this room, over A6, I've put a room information token. So I've edited it, and when I click on it, it pulls up this window down here. And I read this top part, and then everything else I need to know is written in here. Now sometimes, like right here, I have creatures, what they need to know about any creatures in this room. Sometimes it says treasure. I've also got some bolded parts. Sometimes I'll underline. And I have that for each room. So A3, here's what they need to know. A4, here's what they need to know. A7, and so on and so forth. So that's where I store my notes. That way, if someone goes, all right, we're going to enter A1, and then manages to swing all the way back here and go to A10, I am not fumbling through my paper notes trying to figure out where things are. Now I want to come over here real quick because another cool thing, and this takes a little more image editing, let me reveal this area here. Right now in the GM view, there's a secret door right there. But in the player view, I managed to make it so that that secret door is hidden. So that's another cool aspect of this. Now the one of the last things I want to show you for this is the NPC tokens. So let's just go ahead and go back to the GM view. Originally this is an enemy. Now in some games like Numenera is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of information to each uh, creature. But let's say they come in here and there's four of these enemy drain spiders that they have to fight. Well each drain spider I have set up so that all of the stats are in here. Got everything set in. And that way I can track each of these four spiders individually in Pathfinder Society. Let me go to the last map because there is a necromancer in this last map. And I wanted to show you what's under his. So as Paizo is really good at doing, they give you the tactics. Before combat, during combat, morale. Now this part right here I wanted to show you because this is great for me. While I have everything that they do written in here, even stuff that I'll never look at again, some things I need to know about, such as this spell that he is, this character is supposed to use, Ghoul Touch. They don't give it to you in the stat block, so I put this in real quick, a shortened version of it. The rest of this, from here down, literally came from the Paizo Adventure Path. And I just put it in here so I know what is going on. Now I'm going to jump back over because some people have asked about Numenera-specific things. So let me go to my map for this adventure. So this is the shattered tower that I've been working on that I ran a couple of weeks ago. And one thing someone asked was over here on the right, I have these buttons. So if I lock that button in and lock this chat window down here, each of these does something different. So if I want something weird to happen, I want a randomly generated weird thing about an NPC, I click that button and I have it coded so that I get this generated so that only I can see it. There is something weird out in the wild. Woman's, arms hangs use, woman's arm hangs uselessly, hardened to a stone-like substance. So I have that for all sorts of things. These are from one of the Numenera uh, third-party supplements. This stuff down here is kind of just stuff I've collected, so I can just get an anytime GM intrusion. Dungeon fun right here, I actually put all these in from the 5th edition D&D uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. So I need some random furnishing in a room. Boom, I have a hassock. I need a random noise, there's a bang or a slam that you hear. Or if tricks are fun too, and I've got two things set up if you come down here. This trick is a glass sculpture, it has the following effect. Gives directions, true or false. 
And I'll go over more on how I did this later, but I know some people were curious about all of these buttons. And just so you know, I had to code every one of those buttons myself. But once you do it the first time, it's actually not too hard to keep going. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, because the tokens in Numenera are a little different, and I wanted to show the versatility of this program. So, when I run Numenera, I do Theater of the Mind. So, everything you see here really is just for me. The only thing I showed the players in this game was this drawing of the tower. So, that's literally all I showed them. Everything else, though, is for me. So I still have these things going on, these room tokens, so everything I need to read, all the important things. But then we come here, and our first NPC is here. Now when I click on it, I still get that. Instead of double-clicking to open it, I can just look at this because this is a much simpler combat system, but there's everything I need to know. Let me come up here because this is a little more complicated NPC right here, this odd lark. And I have more things on what they should know about this odd lark tending to its grub fat. So that's how I use it in Numenera, Numenera and Pathfinder. The other cool thing about this that I've used is not only can I play it live in the same room with other people on a TV or a separate monitor, but I can use this online. I ran the Skull and Shackle, Shackles Pathfinder's uh, Adventure Path for about six months online with a group about four or five hours away from me. We just didn't have enough time to move. They threw this their player screen up on a widescreen TV, put a microphone in the middle of the room, and I sat in my office at home. So, well, that's about it for right now. Uh, what I'm going to do next, my second video, will be on creating a narrative outline like I do for Pathfinder Society, and I'll walk you along how I do that. Uh, and that's I mainly use that for... Uh, published adventures where there's a lot of notes and I need to know what happens if they touch this object but not that object. And I'll show you more of how I do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.